Well, here I am again. Skip, Victor Echo, Six Bravo, Golf Tangle. I've uh, turned into a paper certificate fan, and um, I've got this one here for 1296, but I'm trying for 13 centimeters. So I got two more continents I need Asia and Africa. So this is the story of uh, getting the Asian uh, QSL with uh, VK3 November X ray. And uh, it was kind of a different one for me, I gotta admit. So in April, there was a European 13 centimeter contest and I got set up for that and made uh, 13 or 14 contacts, but nothing to help me with getting my uh, worked all continent certificate. So uh, shortly after that, that uh, I got in contact with Charlie uh, Victor Kilo 3 November X-Ray. So here's the big butt. Uh, Charlie tells me that he can only transmit up to, uh, well, from 2300 to 2302 megahertz. And the way my equipment set up here with the transverter and uh, using the, Ken the Kenwood TS-2000 with the IF of 144 to 148, I start transmitting at 2304 to 2308. So we're uh, going to be off by 2 megahertz to work each other, uh, even crossband. So... Um, that's the issue, so I had to work on that. So I did the usual modifications to the Kenwood to make it transmit lower. I got it to go down to 142 megahertz is all. And with the transverter, it uh, puts it on 2302, which is right on the edge of where Charlie VK3 was going to be. Uh, gives us no wiggle room and uh, doesn't allow us for Doppler, so I had to come up with something else. Well, this is something I wanted to try. Uh, I did a few years back with an SDR dongle, blew it up, so I never uh, attempted it again. Uh, we wanted to do this just to say I could work Japan and a few other countries that, uh, you know, 30 centimeters is all over the place, so you almost need a second radio for a split operation. I have this oldie but goodie R7000 ICOM, uh, just a receiver, of course, that's all I need. And uh, I decided to use it mainly because what's on the back of it. It has an output jack for the 10.7 megahertz uh, IF frequency, which will plug directly into my um, SDR rock uh, interface for the band scope, which I desperately need. I don't think I could live without uh, being able to see uh, where everybody is and where they're transmitting, especially with split f operation like this. Just hunting pecking with just a VFO dial would kill me. Okay, got a receiver picked out. Now let's get it all tied together into the sequencer. And uh, <laughs> the RF lines also. It's going to be interesting. So I've got a box full of coaxial relays. I'll start there. I've been collecting these for a long time. They're you know, old dial relays and some other old junk that I've picked up over the years. You know, Frequency-wise, they're not very good, a lot of them, but HF. But there's one in there that's uh, very intriguing to me. I've been thinking about trying to use it for something for a long time. I have no idea where I found this relay. There's two or three of them. Uh, through this process, I found one of them was completely fried. But anyways, there it's a double pull, double throw, and it kind of crisscrosses. And uh, when it's switched over to one port, the other port grounds itself. So I thought this could be handy for trying to help uh, the RF from getting into that second receiver. So I found another old aluminum die cast box. Got this thing mounted and uh, actually made some nice little brass sleeves. The, those two le loose leads were on circuit boards, I think, at one time. So I had to make little adapters that they'd hook right into those, a pair of uh, chassis mount B and C connectors. And uh, got it all hooked up and marked off. And uh, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a winner. Then I got the new relay box mounted in behind the bench where the radios are, I guess you'd say. And I got the coax lines hooked up. And then the next step was getting all this tied into the sequencer. That was going to be fun. Not as easy. Well, I dug out the schematics and looky here. I was, I was smart enough in, in the past to uh, put a spare output on the uh, sequencer board that comes out of the pick. Uh, I even had the transistor mounted. So it was just a matter of getting the shelf out and getting it wired up and then rewriting the code a little bit to include the um, second receiver relay circuit. So this is the uh, sequencer control shelf for the 13 centimeter operation. 
And what did I say? Uh, yeah, get it out of the rack? Oh, what a job. I do have all the cables and wires labeled. And uh, getting them all off was uh, a bit of a trick in keeping track of it all. So, you know, when I was putting it back together, <laughs> I, I lost one. I mean, believe it or not, there was one I couldn't find and I just had it hooked up wrong. So it takes some doing. I got lots of documentation and all this, but it was a chore. So I got it out and uh, got the shelf on the bench, lifted up the sequencer board and wired in the uh, new circuit for the relay out to the, you know, board uh, terminal strips. And all I had to do then was just rewrite the code a little bit and it was good to go. So this is the messy hookup. Um, this is no worse than anybody else's ham shack, I'm sure. Anyways, we uh, see the box there with the relay and so a set of wires go over to wires and, and coaxes mostly go over to the uh, spare second receiver the R7000 and then another set go over to the uh, TS2000 down below which is going to be the main transmitter the uh, the spare receiver is uh, like I say the, the, the main receiver now then from the relay box I had to run another wire over to the sequencer so it uh, gets tied in with all the other cables and goes along this path it gets bundled in with the other cables, runs up along the top of the uh, first uh, rack, which is the, well, I call it the VHF, UHF uh, amplifier rack, in behind the uh, water tank for the uh, 1296 exciter, or transverter amplifier. And it goes along the top of the uh, 23 centimeter rack, and then it finally eventually gets over to where the uh, 13 centimeter equipment is. And that's where it gets hooked into the circuit. So I did some testing and uh, thought, okay, time to do it, but couldn't you believe it? It took quite a while to get all this done, and, and then the weather changed. It got real ugly. I started raining and blowing, and, and we just ran out of time for the skid. So contacted Charlie, and he said, well, maybe next month, and we'll give it a roll then. So it was all sitting there pretty and waiting, and uh, we shall see. Just after that, though, the uh, Dubis 23-centimeter uh, contest uh, came into action so we had changed feeds over the to the bigger feed and got on air uh, in a smoky uh, afternoon worked a few stations and uh should have had a lot of fun and then um right after that i was thinking about uh, charlie again and he must have been reading my mind because he emailed me and says hey let's try that sked again so it was uh, back out swap the feeds and get ready again to try it so how we went Back up the elevator, got the uh, other feet off, put the 13 centimeter feet on and got all weather covered up and started moving things into position to, uh, well, fire things up and make sure it's all working. It's a beautiful day. Got a new camera here, so I thought I'd just try something here and take a different angle of different shots and see what happens. So, yeah, this is for your entertainment. If not, just skip ahead. I thought I'd stay up in the elevator here while I'm swinging the dish around and have a look behind the dish surface and amongst the ribs. I, uh, every spring I have a family of magpies that just want to build a nest in there in a worse way. I uh, go out every morning, I, I drag them out with a long pole I have and they're back in in the afternoon putting the sticks back in again. But I think I finally got them convinced to stay away and build it somewhere else. Well, with all outside work done on the dish, it's back in the shack again. The far left rack there is a 13 centimeter assembly again, and uh, well, both receivers running now is uh, now or never, I guess. Well, the control shelves for the driver stage and the amplifiers are showing good water flow. The sequencer is enabled. I guess it's uh, time to key it up and see what happens. We'll see the uh, sequencer lights uh, change here shortly. Well, there's the echo, kind of feeble, but there it is. Yeah, that second receiver isn't isn't the greatest in the world, that's for sure. craziest thing that I had to get around was uh, almost embarrassing was um, <clears throat> where I'm going to set the second receiver to hear my echoes. I uh, got the TS2000 
2000 set on 142 megahertz. But where's the echo going to be? And then it dawned on me, a Doppler difference, you big dummy. Oh, well. <laughs> Live and learn. So here we go again and see if we can uh, spot the echo on the uh, screen this time. Well, there it is in between all the birdies of the uh, old ICOM receiver, which uh, can't do much about that. So I played around finally, and uh, we had a sked at uh, 0600, so time came, and uh, we hooked up on the uh, reflector on the computer, and then here I heard him calling me, and we went after it. Uh, some, of this, some of this video is kind of limited, so I'm probably going to edit it and chop through it, and there's places where I didn't get the audio, forgot to turn the speaker on for the receiver, and uh, it turned out to be kind of a disaster, but you'll get the idea. Since I was transmitting with the TS-2000 only, I turned the volume down on it, so the side tone for my CW uh, wasn't there. So all you're hearing is the uh, hissing on and off of the old ICOM receiver, which is being overloaded. We got a little closer in frequency than I thought we would. But uh, anyways, it, it works. The other thing I've been noticing is the output of my uh, output system on 2304. After a shorter period of transmitting, the output starts to drop off, and it drops off quite a bit. If I'm on there for a long period of time, it goes from 300 watts down to 200 watts. And I do believe it's a small driver stage in the transverter itself that uh, can't handle the duration. So, something else to look into. And for some stupid reason, because I do this all the time, except for I'm going to be recording video here, I, I turn the speaker off on the uh, audio from the uh, DSP box. So now you won't hear what he's saying. So we're going to cut through this real fast. This is where I realized I had the speaker turned off. What a bonehead. Another issue with this old receiver is uh, the tuning speed. It's uh, lowest is 0.1 of a kilohertz, so it's kind of a kind of a crude adjustment. So it's hard to get the pitch of the CW tone he's sending me, you know, the way I like it. Charlie was easy to copy though. Uh, there's no troubles there, as long as it didn't land on top of one of the uh, birdies of the old radio itself. But it was easy, easy copy all around. I thought.
Well, that's it for this video. Like I said, it's uh, one more notch on my uh, goal of getting uh, worked all continents for 13 centimeters. Not real happy with the video, but oh well, better than nothing, I guess. So, anyways, uh, thanks to uh, Ch Charlie, VK3 November X ray, and we'll say 73s to everybody else. Bye for now, V6 Bravo Golf Tangle.